Rick, you said after the game on Saturday that you thought the, it was a clean charge call. Now that you've had the chance to look at the film, do you still feel the same way? Well, I don't know if I, uh, on that particular call at the time, I obviously thought that, but now I can talk to you about a lot of other calls I don't agree with. But uh, in that particular instance, uh, I think the spin, when he sp uh, spun, he there was contact, and I thought the defender was there. But like I said, there's a lot of other calls I could talk about that I wouldn't agree with. Um, is Eve healthy at this point, and how did you feel Josiah did in his first game back in a few? What do you say? What do you say? Eve? Is, is Eve healthy right now? You know, he struggled with a little, a little tendonitis in his in his right knee, and uh, he he's, he hasn't done much. You guys saw him; he didn't do much in practice for a couple of days. And but he's such a tough kid that he he'll he'll keep fighting it. And uh, I thought Josiah, for the most part, not. Being able to do much the last couple of weeks went out and um, was was okay. He was he some of the things that he didn't do. He it's just a really probably not playing that he needs to clean up and he will he'll do it. Uh, I'm Josiah, where do you feel like he is is limited? What are the things that you feel like he can't do when he's still kind of coming off of, of this injury and kind of working back in? Again, I, you know, he he was doing some good things. We felt like he, you know, really started coming around. And but he's dealt with that injury all year. He has, and uh, this time he knew he wanted to. And I'm not saying it's the exact same injury, but it's but it's in that area. And he, uh, we told him he had to come back when he thought he could could play. And I think he took, he did the way he handled it was the right way to handle it. And. Now it's a matter of him getting back and getting his conditioning back where he needs to have it and, and uh, getting back in the flow with everybody. Coach, you're not trying to you know, harp on the, on the kid, but Jordan Bowden the other night, I mean, the only senior on your team, it, it's late, and, and it does, doesn't look like he you know, wants, to, wants to step up and, and own that moment in the way like Lamonte would. You know, how much does that hurt you to not have that guy? Well, you know what, I, we all feel for Jordan because it, we – one thing I will tell you, he, he has continued to defend, which is really, when you think about it, at a high level, it's hard to do when uh, you're not playing as well as you want to play on the offensive end. I mean, it normally goes just like uh, I could tell you the other day, uh, we missed two different players, missed a free throw, and went down and almost right after that broke down on the defensive end where they, I think, had that – they didn't let the free, missed free throw go and go down. They weren't as locked in as they needed to be, and they gave up a, a play on the defensive end. For a guy that has struggled as much as he has, he hasn't done that on the defensive end. And to be honest with you, we all keep thinking sooner or later it's, it's got to happen because um, I think obviously it's the, he's having his worst shooting year that he's had since he's been here. and. Uh, and so we we just hope it happens, you know, because he he's doing what he should be doing, and uh, sometimes it, it can become a mental block. And we we do everything we can to try to you know get him to understand that when he's open, he's got to shoot the ball, and and we just ask him to take good shots. To be honest with you, rhythm shots, and and he needs to see a couple of them go go in, and uh, hopefully he can can get it going. You've done a pretty good job of avoiding turnovers the last few games up until Saturday. How much of a concern was the 20 turnovers? Is that a product of South Carolina's defense? or Some, but not. Uh, John Fulkerson's travels those, the, had, had nothing to do with their defense. Uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, uh, Devontae threw the ball out of bounds with no pressure on him because Josiah broke his cut. That had nothing to do with them. That was us. And, and uh, that's, that was the most frustrating thing from our, our team was the fact that we turned it over and uh, too many times where, we had, where they had nothing to do with it. That was, that was the most disappointing thing where it was just careless mistakes that we talked about. And, and uh, twice we turned it over where, like, you know, we, we knew we were going to lob the ball, uh, which we got a lob dunk. And then Josiah came out of a timeout and uh, – why he did it, we don't know, because that wasn't even the play we had on, you know. And we start the second half with a situation where we ended up not with a great possession because uh, we didn't execute. He didn't do what the play. And those are the things that are most frustrating. And the 20 turnovers, 
you know, I, a lot of them were just us. And uh, that's not to take any way away from South Carolina, but when you're not being guarded, uh, you know, on the perimeter and, and you travel tr before with no pressure, that's just being careless with the ball. Rick, how important is it for this young group to get to the postseason, even if it's not the NCAA tournament? How much could that mean for them experience-wise moving forward? You know what I think the most important thing, Grant, we talked about is, is where we can really get the leadership. Uh, and if it's not going to be from the older guys, it's got to be from younger guys. Like we, we showed a clip uh, in the game where it hasn't happened too many times this year. Because if you look at our older guys, they're not the most vocal guys. And if you see, you talk to them, you guys do. They're, you know, I'd say they're on the side of being quiet. But uh, there was a play where Devonte Gaines was playing really hard, got tripped, got up, and made another play, and got ex and turned around talking to his teammates in, in a way like, you know, we got we got to get a stop here. That's what we're lacking, and uh, we got to get that. And I don't care if it comes from. If the sophomores have to step up and do it, or the freshmen, they've got to do it. And uh, but we we that's where, as we continue this year out, that's the one thing that we I like to think that we can get some momentum somewhere that it, building for the future. But with this team, and uh, so we challenged our older guys yesterday about that. You know where where is it going to come from coming down the stretch? Because we've got a lot of opportunities right here in front of us, and we've told them there's not a game on our schedule we can't win. But we, we're going to have to – you can't turn the ball over 20 times because once you do that, I mean, you're, you're almost having to play near perfection to win a game when you give a team an extra, you know, 20 possessions. And we missed some free – some key guys missed some free throws, that guys that we think can make shots. Those are the things that, again, you don't want to go into any game thinking you've got to be perfect. But if you're going to turn it over 20 times, you got to darn near be perfect if you're going to win. And, and – uh, so that goes back to what we're talking about, the leadership. And and uh, I'm not thinking about, uh, you know, we want to be in postseason. We do. But right now we've got to worry about Vanderbilt and uh, get ready for that and then the next one after that. I'm not – don't miss – we always think about postseason. Don't get me wrong. We always think about it. We know what, we know what goes into it, and it's winning games. And that's – you've got to win games. You just mentioned Vandy. Just what have you seen from them over the last couple of weeks? I think Jerry's done a great job. I really do. And I watch him. Uh, I think his players have improved. You know, they uh, obviously they went through a period where they were in a shooting slump, and it and it hurt them. But uh, you look at there's not one guy on their team that hasn't improved since we played them. And again, I think that's a sign of you know terrific coaching and and players that want to be coached and. Uh, they they made it hard on everybody they play. They obviously beat you know uh, LSU when they were undefeated, number one in the league, and they had Kentucky down at halftime, and and uh, they're 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 close like everybody. You know they're there, and and uh, so you've got to be ready to play. It's plain and simple. And they they have the ability. and They've proven they can. They even though they've what got the one win, but they have played everybody tough, and and. Uh, I guarantee you when they sit down and watch tape just like we do, they show the what ifs, things that they, they can certainly fix. And I'm sure that's what he and his staff's trying to do. Uh, Rick, the Gaines moment that you mentioned, what are some of the things that, that you've done or can do this season to try and draw that out of guys that are naturally quiet besides sort of saying, like, we need this and pointing to, to moments that you've liked? Well, w when you talk about, about it, it's not – I, I don't want anybody to – I don't like any of the phony stuff. I don't like that. It, it's just simply – it could be a coming down, a coming down the floor. Like, I, I, I give you a great example. I thought Kozar was terrific coming down the stretch Saturday. I mean, I watched him out there talking to his teammates when they were on defense. And and uh, I thought, that again, nothing crazy. It's just that – but you, during the game's going on. You, you're aware of what needs to be – it's not just you. You're talking to your teammates. And – Folky has done some of that. I mean, he's gotten to where he, you know, he out of bounds played the other day. He uh, he called it. And what I'm talking about is, you know, people pretty much know when that clock gets down under 10, we're going to probably switch all ball screens and switch. But the first half, we have no problem with it. The second half, we do because first half, we're down there and we're they can hear us. But uh, You'd be amazed how much we've talked to our guys about somebody's got to be you – know, players should be knowing the shot clock. And they got to be what, on, on the defensive end as much as on the offensive end. 
And, and the guy, when you go up to set a ball screen, it could happen randomly, but somebody, when, the, when they're away from us, needs to be com communicating. And that's the leadership. It's, uh, you know, when you know your players, like we know each other well enough to know when the guy's body language, he might be struggling a little bit here or there. And uh, like I made a comment to Eve during the game, hey, Eve, the coaches don't think you got it right now. And just like that, just like that, he flipped it and became much more aggressive. It's just little subtle things that where players should be thinking about their teammates more. And uh, that's getting out of your comfort zone a little bit. And I don't think there's one guy on our team that would uh, bark, bad at, bark back at a guy if somebody told him, hey, man, you need to play harder. You need to do this. You need to do that. And to me, that's the beginning of what the kind of leadership. It's not the raw, raw stuff. It's just the, the, the things, the comments that need to be said where players are talking. And it's really more difficult than you think getting guys to talk throughout the game. The best teams you play against are the ones that are communicating the whole time. I mean, we, we still have guys that uh, little subtle things that we want to do, just that you have to adjustments you have to make that that we're not getting from one or maybe one guy. And that's where, again, someone needs to be saying, hey, you got to, we're, we, we've moved our offense up higher. You got to get up here, things like that. And, that, that's the type of leadership that we're not getting. Jalen Johnson had been playing well for a couple of games, and then he played 13 minutes against South Carolina. What was he lacking on Saturday night? Again, he, uh, again, I've told you all these guys are going to be based on production there for what we think. You know, Jalen missed a shot. He went down, and we had one assignment on one of their players that we're never going to go under, and we did. And uh, and we have, we have – Devontae's been – playing well Josiah comes back in which obviously you know Jalen got those minutes when he wasn't wasn't uh, playing and uh, but everything we do with all these guys I'm telling you it's gonna be based on production and uh, and what's difficult for players is you look out and you say well this guy makes a little bit you know he gets a little bit more rope than this guy and it all goes back to what we see every day in practice and uh, and and can you earn extra rope you can just like Devontae Gaines, and I hope he can continue. He's put together six games where he's been pretty darn consistent. He, he did something, you think about it, he, he did something in our scout report he wasn't supposed to do. He charged because we told him that was going to happen if you look to take more than two dribbles, and he didn't play after that because the games are so close and, and the possessions are so important, you can't wait and hope that he's going to get it. So, and certain guys who are out there who've been out there more, do certain guys get rope, more rope? They do because they earn it, and they earn it every day in practice. And uh, there's only so many minutes in a game. And, uh, again, there's certain like, – just like Urosh goes in the game, the violation he had stepping across the lane, he can't do that. I mean, that's a possession. We lose a one-possession game. We got a, a good free throw shooter on the line, and we take a point away from him. And when, when you're working your way into the lineup, You've got to go in and do the things that really help win. You don't have to be perfect, but you can't do things that are absolutely out of the norm in terms of things that we've talked about. You can't go under on a guy that all he can do is step behind a screen and shoot. You can't step into a lane when the guy's not even attempting to shoot the ball yet. Those are breakdowns that can't happen. And uh, that's what's tough about it where – you know, as time goes on, guys have to earn their way out there to where they earn more rope. And But those those mistakes, he would have come out for that regardless. And so I could sit here and talk to you all day about different ways how guys work their way in the lineup, how guys work their way out of the lineup. And most of the time, it's because they don't do what we've talked to them about. It's the role that we want them to play. And if they're not willing to play that role, they're not going to play. You followed up a 21-point win with the loss. I don't think you've won two straight games for a while now. The inconsistency, is it a product of kind of the youth you've had, or what do you think has been the reason? For you that? guys, I mean, look, we got – if you'd have told me when the season started, Lamonte Turner wasn't going to be here, Jordan Bounds going to have his worst shooting year ever, and for us to even be where we are, we got two guys that are on the roster that wasn't even on our opening day roster. We've gone through, you know, a guy that, you know, you think about when the season started, and you guys know you we were expecting – Lamonte, uh, Jordan, and Josiah James to play a lot. All three of those have had one, – one's no longer with us. One's having as tough a year as he's ever had. And one's been hurt from the start. And for us to be where we are, I'm really proud of these guys. I really am. For, and the fact that we had a guy that had three days of practice and has done a tremendous job. Euros set out all year come in. 
just like Saturday, we had to start over again. And I think a lot of teams go through these things, and I don't think anybody feels sorry for you. I can only tell you what we've gone through. I could go back to the games that when, like, right after Christmas, we were a team that looked, I mean, we were just just a shell of what we started and just trying to get it back together and think that a guy comes on campus with like Santiago I don't know where we'd be without him right now I don't I have no idea but for to be able to continue to fight back and still be in the thick of it I think is a real compliment to these guys I mean I think it really is and knowing that uh, again I'm not we're not talking to him about being young because I think when you these guys have played enough minutes right now that uh, we we're, we're in it. Like I go back Saturday, uh, you know we had. I mean John Fulkerson had six turnovers. You don't expect that from him. I don't know if he's that might have been his career high. I think. Well, I don't know. I mean it's that's a lot of turnovers from a post guy. Eve had two that were that had nothing to do with the defense. He just went. Those those are the, it's the older guys that in the, in these games this time of year that, that have got to really you, you can't travel. You, you, you can't travel, and, and he got – Folky had one turn where he got tripped and he got up. You can't stand up. That's a rule. When you're on the floor of the ball, those are plays you can't do. But, uh, again, it, it, the consistency, our whole year has been inconsistent. And for these guys to continue to fight the way they are and do the things, and I, I tell you, they, they have given us everything they, they got. And uh, I would not trade them for anybody because I know they're trying. I know we got, we're going to get so much better as time goes on. Does that make us feeling better right now? We were all disappointed losing the game Saturday because we controlled it for the most part. And we really, it got away from us around the seven minute mark because we felt like they were reeling right there. And then we had some uh, ease missed free throw at the time. It was a huge missed free throw. Then they go down and we let them have a straight line drive. They hadn't let them have it all game long. And we go back and look at all the things that we said we have to do to beat these guys. We did them all. And in the last couple minutes of the game, we gave up a couple things that, that, we, that we can't. But you've got to give them credit. I mean, Kosar and Lawson, Lawson made a very tough runner on the baseline. And he hit a wide open three where we overhelped. And that's how quickly it, it can change. But uh, uh, does frustration come in sometimes with, with where we are? It does. But it, the bottom line is we've got to find a way to finish it. And we, we had it, but we didn't finish it. And we got to let it go and get ready for Saturday and, I mean, for tomorrow and then on, on to Saturday, then on down the road. Time for a couple more. Got them? Am I good? Bob, you got something back there, Bobby? Just soaking it all in. Yeah. We need you to be in. If you're going to be in here, we need you to participate. <laughs> you know? We're not. Are, are these, I mean, does he get a ticket to come in, Tom? Huh? He just wanted to bring me out. We got any news about anything? I mean, anything in the – you want to talk about the, the Chiefs or anything? You quit wearing that shirt. <laughs> really? What's your next big thing? I mean – Really? You going up for spring training? <coughs> Somebody told me you were thinking about that play-by-play -play job. Is that true? No, because I'm looking for you. How lucky am I? Thank you, <laughs>